Well, come on in. It looks of your desk, I'd say you're pretty busy. Well, that's just because I'm very unorganized. Don't let that fool you, though. What's up? What are you doing down here? Nothing. You just never see around the apartment anymore. Where are you? Have you been keeping an eye on me? Well, people have to watch out for their neighbors, don't they? Yes, they do. Appreciate that. I would bet that you're involved. I am very, very involved. No, I'm not talking about work. Well, I'm a slave to my work. Oh, I'm disappointed. I thought maybe there was a new woman in your life. No, there's nobody new. Well, well, I just thought maybe there might be a new woman in your life, that's all. Well, I'm not looking. Oh. Of course, I do like what I'm looking at right now. I just can't get over how much you look like my ex-wife, Laura. <laughs> you even laugh like her. I detest my laugh. I like your laugh. But I think it's dangerous to do it around me, though. Laugh? No, just go on looking beautiful. Of course, if you stop, then I may stop worshipping you, though, from a distance. Let's not. Let's just remain good neighbors, good buddies. Okay. <laughs> just don't smile at me. Oh, I promise. So, Scott, what have you been up to? I'm up to my ears here at work. Right. Well, I don't want to go on about it because I don't want to bore you. Well, you won't. Well, then it bores the hell out of me. Well, then why do you get so involved? I really am interested, really. Why? Well, probably because we're in the same line of work. Yeah, you catch them and I get them off. <laughs> no, I'm curious. Is it modesty, client confidentiality, or don't you like to talk about what you do for a living? Well, you know, once I get turned on a little bit, I'll talk about it forever. And you do turn me on. Um, well, is it a challenge? I know you're a good lawyer. You're a good detective. Is there something that you're doing now that's very challenging? Well, I am working on a case for my cousin, Tommy. That's very challenging. They don't come along like that very often. Sad. Well, my job is to keep it from being sad. I know Tommy Simone just had that personal tragedy. Made me sick when I heard about it. Yeah. It's tough. No, don't misunderstand. I don't blame Tom for doing what he did. Well, either do I. If I was in his shoes, I'd have done the same thing. Probably even worse. What do you think is going to happen to him? Well, I think it's going to get a lot rougher. You know, the one thing about bad times, they don't last. That's all they say. Tom, I don't know what to say to be helpful. Sorry. She really doesn't want to see anybody right now. I'll help you, you know, get it pulled together pretty soon. <sighs> Thank you. Things are happening in your life too, huh? Yeah. I guess we're in the same boat. <sighs> kind of hard to compare. But what I meant was we're both waiting for my father to make a decision. Good luck. What are you doing here? Well, Steve asked to see me. What for? To tell you the truth, I don't know. Well, to tell you the truth, I hope it's not what I think it is. I'm ready for Tom. Send him in. Yes, Dr. Hardy. Your father will see you, Dr. Hardy. Thank you for waiting. Please sit down. I'd uh, rather stand if you don't mind. I don't blame you for being impatient. I know how painful this must be for you. Please, Dad, don't try to make it any easier. You can't. I wish none of this had ever happened. Well, I can make it easier on you. I don't expect any special consideration, especially with Edward Quartermain and Irma Foster helping you make your decision. May come as a surprise to you, but both of them favored leniency. Edward Quartermain? Yeah, he admired the way you stuck up for your wife and, of course, yourself. 
That is surprising. Maybe that was his way of dumping the decision right back in my lap. I don't know. At any rate... Excuse me. Dr. Hardy, this is the report that you asked for. You wanted to see it the minute it came in. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. This will only take a minute to read. It needs my signature. I don't want to be interrupted until we're finished here. Yes, sir. And now to take care of you. As your father, how oh, I wish I could. As chief of staff? In spite of the forgiving attitude of my colleagues, I can't let this institution be tainted by even the slightest suspicion of favoritism. I understand Please, that. Please, let me finish. I'm sorry. Your actions on two occasions, no matter how justified they seem to you at the time, cannot be swept under the rug. Therefore, it's my duty to inform you that you are hereby suspended from duty for the next two months. Suspended? Suspended. tell you how sorry I am about Tom. I know this is very painful for you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate your concern, but that's not why I asked to see you. I wanted to talk to you about your future here at the hospital. Yes, sir. How on earth could you allow anyone to jeopardize? I mean, having a stupid campaign trying to influence me has to be the worst calculation of your career. I'm, I'm not following you exactly. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What campaign? What? The one your wife is waging for you. To be my assistant chief of staff. Oh, my God. I mean, having patients, former patients, send me telegrams. Sending residents in here to try to tell me how to run the hospital. Trying to influence board members. I find that totally unbelievable. Satisfy our lives. Besides your parents, what other people? Aren't they enough? They'll come around, and then no problem. I love your optimism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seen Lucy? Uh, she was in the lounge. Hi, hi. I thought I heard your voice. Come on, tell me what happened. What? Well, it. What is it? You look like you didn't get the job. Steve Hardy says that he needs a strong assistant chief of staff. 
not somebody whose wife leads him around by his nose. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to ruin my career. No, Tony, I'm not... You know, that's why you wouldn't place. let me ask any questions this morning. It's because it would have spoiled your game, wouldn't it? It was just a big game to you. This is not the place to talk about I'll this. I'll forgive you. This I'm, one you won't get out I'm of. You're trying know, to something. help you. And you won't give up either. You blew it. You blew it, Lucy. You blew it big. No, Tony, I just did it because I love you. I was and You're just to lucky help. that Jesse's here. Because otherwise, I would do something to you that I would love to do. And you'd regret. Don't... Uh, Lucy. Telephone for you. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is, um, Lucy Jones. Oh, hello, Amanda. Um, no, no, I, I haven't forgotten uh, the floating rib. Y yes, I'll be there. What time? That's fine. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I just have a, a little frog in my throat. Um, uh, I'll be... Okay. All right, I'll see you then.